Hey guys, it's me, 80s World Four. So today, guys, we'll be discussing about the RGN national team, guys, and I have a special guest on here with me. The guest is Rank, and today we'll be discussing about RGN national team. So take it away, Rank. Um, what's your thoughts, man? Um, well, I'm basically very excited about uh, the national team right now. I think we are in a very good level with the unbeaten streak, uh, 32 or 33 matches right now. Uh, I cannot count. <laughs> but it's been way too long since we lost the game. And yeah, basically everyone's excited about uh, the national team. Um, after some rough years, uh, 2018 was a very rough World Cup for us. Um, but now um, it seems like we're back, you know? Yeah. You know, it's interesting because I was looking at this Argentine team. And it's, it's almost like complete opposite 2018 because 2018 was a disastrous one. And um, RJ were very, very fortunate to have made the round 16. And you could even argue they are fortunate to even qualify for the World Cup. And just that World mm -hmm. Cup in general, yeah. they were very, very um, defensively just completely in shambles. So what do you think has changed for RJ to be in this kind of position? Because I think a lot has changed. You know, what do you think is the reason why RJ is so different now compared to 2018? Well, the main man has to be uh, Lionel Scaloni. Like, he just revolutionized the, the national team. He was uh, in the staff with Sampaoli in 2018. Uh, he just stayed uh, with the national team once he left. Um, people weren't sure about him because he hadn't uh, had any other experience as a manager. He hadn't managed any other national team or any club or nothing. This was his first experience as a manager, so people were very doubtful of him. And the start of the, of the process was very slow, you know. Um, players like Mascherano were gone, Iwain was gone, like Banega was gone. So many of these key players that were in the national team for so long were gone. And he had to go from the bottom, um, pick up like the youth that was abroad. Uh, he actually lives in Spain, which helps a lot with picking up developing youth in Europe. Um, and yeah, even though there were some doubts at, at the start, um, he slowly picked up the pace and the team understood his idea perfectly and everything came together. And right now, uh, even if you don't have as many superstars as before, the team plays as a unit and they, you can tell they really want this. They really like being together. They really like being on the national team, they show it on social media and stuff. And you can see that they are happy to play for Argentina. It's super cool to see just uh, how fiercely they fight for every ball. They always go forward. I don't know. I just really like this team right now. Oh, yeah. And it's all thanks to Scaloni. Yeah. And it's interesting because I think Scaloni has definitely been a good part because I remember um, in the 2019 Club America, I watched it. RJ just looked really... It was more of a continuation, but as the tournament went on, it seemed like Argentina got better. And obviously, you know, mm -hmm. there's that game against Brazil. You, you must be really mad about that game. And trust me, Pam, that game was uh, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but that game was also the time when I realized uh, I was on board with Escaloni. Like, at the start of that Copa America, you know, we lost to Colombia. Yeah. We drew with Paraguay. And, you know, I was having doubts. I was like... Maybe this is not it. We are we still suck, um, but the team got better. And after that game with Brazil, we were really competitive. We maybe deserved a bit more. It wasn't meant to be. Uh, we lost to VAR and stuff. Um, I don't know. Uh, from that point, I knew I was on board with with this idea, and and it paid off. Yeah. So it's very interesting because, like I said, um, RJ, this is the, probably the best team we've seen, and so many people go far as far as to say to compare to 2014 that RG did team, you know, because of how good it was. I think it was under coach under Sabella, uh, who did mm -hmm. a good job with the team. So let's talk about the squad for a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, what were you saying? Yeah. Sorry, you had something to say? Oh, no, uh, rest in peace for Sabella. Great guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He passed away, sadly. <coughs> <coughs> All right, let's talk about the squad. So um, let's talk about goalkeeper. Obviously, I think goalkeeper is very obvious, the three goalkeepers. Yeah. Um, yeah, Scaloni usually calls up uh, four goalkeepers, but he has confirmed that he's going to only bring uh, three for the World Cup. Uh, the starting one is obviously Emi Martinez. 
Um, ever since the Copa America, he's been so, so good. Uh, Emiliano is the full name, maybe, yeah, for Aston Villa. Um, okay, um, Martinez. Yeah, ever since that Copa America, he's solidified himself uh, in that position. Uh, he's uh, such a good shot stopper and he's so confident with the ball. Uh, I think that's that's mainly why he got him. And just being so much time in English football has been so good for him. Um, do we talk about, uh, about another goalkeeper? So that goes for next. Yeah, well, let's talk about the backup goalkeeper. So I think um, who else do you think is going to be backup? You know, in case Martinez is injured, Emmy Martinez. Um, so for Scaloni, the main backup is uh, Franco Armani, who plays for River Plate in the Argentine League. Yeah. I personally don't like Armani that much, mainly because he's old. And like I said, he he plays on the Argentine League, which not to take anything away from the Argentine League, but no players from the Argentine League or no strikers at least are going to the World Cup, you know. We, the other backups are uh, Jeronimo Rulli, who is at Villarreal and had an amazing season at Villarreal, even though he had uh, a bit to blame on him uh, in that series against, against Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, but it's still a great season for him. And then it's Juan Musso at Atalanta. You know, one is at Premier League, the other at La Liga, the other at Serie A. You know, these keepers are on the best leagues in the world against the best strikers in the world. I think those three should go, but since Caloni thinks Armani is the main backup, I think uh, Musso is going to be missing the World Cup, and we're going to go with Martinez, Armani, and Rulli. Yeah. All right, that, that's decent, I guess. Uh, what formation do you think is going to go with the World Cup? Uh, no, 4-4-3 four, four, three, uh, four, three, three is good. 4-3-3 uh, three, three is what we've usually been using, and it's it's working wonderfully. All right, let's do. Let's go to right backs now. Uh, right backs, uh, it's gonna be Noel Molina. I believe uh, he plays for Udinese, and it's been a wonderful season for him. Um, it was the second one actually. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, amazing season for him. Uh, very good transition from defense to offense. He's also a goal scorer uh, for Udinese. Um, but he's been just super solid, and he impressed me a lot. I didn't expect much of him. Um, after that, the other right back could be um, Gonzalo Montiel for Sevilla. He's been good, but he is um, not so solid defensively, so I don't trust him much, but he's still a really good backup, I'd say. All right, fair enough. Uh, let's move to center backs now, I guess. Um, the first one would be Otamendi uh, for Benfica. Oh, yeah, uh, Otamendi uh, really reinvented himself with the national team. I was very critical of him, especially in the 2018 World Cup and 2019 Copa America. I think he didn't really perform well, but uh, the, lately he's been reinvented, as I say. I, I think he's super solid again. And with his club uh, as well, Benfica reaching far into the Champions League. He was a big part of that. Um, I think he, he will be starting alongside uh, Christian Romero from Tottenham. Super solid. Uh, he's so good with the ball. Um, he's been deflecting everything, getting everything away from the box, uh, making the big tackles when needed. Uh, I love his attitude. Uh, I love everything about uh, Romero. He's been amazing. Um, as for replacement for those two, uh, the main one is uh, Lisandro Martinez, uh, who plays at Ajax. He's also young and super good with the ball, um, always has clear passes forward. I would argue you could start him over Otamendi, but I think Scaloni is going to go for this, and Lisandro is going to be on the bench. And the other one would be uh, Herman Pesela, who plays for Betis. Um, he's not bad. He's super solid defensively, but doesn't have that good transition into attack that the other uh, three give you. Yeah. Um, let's see who else is there. Uh, what about Jan Foyth? Do you um, do you think he could get called up? 
Foyle could get a uh, called up. Um, Foyle has something going for him that he can be a, a right back as well as a center back. Uh, and I think he, again, for Villarreal, he had a fantastic season. Uh, he didn't take, um, he didn't make the best out of his chances with the national team. And he didn't perform very well for us. But I believe he still has the quality and could get called up as well. All right. Yeah, let's see. I'm trying to look at who else. They, um, let's move to left backs, I guess. Uh, left backs, uh, we have two main ones. I think the main one is going to be Marco Sacuña, uh, who plays for Sevilla. Uh, super, super solid uh, left back as well. Uh, he's been amazing. The other one is obviously uh, Nicolas Tagliafico, also at Ajax. Um, they both have very similar capacities, very good defensively, uh, transition well into the attack, um, cross the, the wings over and over and support the attack. Uh, I favor Acuna mainly because of his stamina and his physical. He's very big, he's strong, uh, something that um, Taglifico is maybe missing, but um, yeah, they're both uh, on pair. I think this is close to a 50-50 for starting position. I don't know, if one of them gets injured, you know, that sucks, but we have the other one, and the team functions just as well. Yeah. Let's move to CDM now. Uh, in the middle is uh, Leandro Paredes, for sure. Uh, the guy is so, so good. Um, super clear on the ball all the time. Uh, for PSG, maybe... Um, not the best season right now, but um, mainly because of injuries and stuff. But no, he, if he's fit, he's amazing for, for the national team, especially um, supporting. That's the most important thing, the transition from defense to attack for, for all of these players uh, with, that we've mentioned so far. Um, they all make that uh, cross to the attack super good and keep the the team as a single block moving back and forth. And I think Paredes is the main part of that. Yeah. Uh, backup CDMs. Uh, is there any backup CDMs you guys have? The main one for Paredes has been uh, Guido Rodriguez uh, from Betis. He started in uh, La Finalissima actually because uh, Paredes was injured. And Guido is he's decent. Uh, he's much more defensive than Paredes. Um, and he can deliver the ball, the ball well, but uh, Paredes just has so much more class than him. Uh, I think Paredes is so much better, but Guido is still a fine replacement. Yeah. Let's move to center mids now. Um, from that side would be uh, Lo Celso, uh, Giovanni from now at Villarreal. Um, yeah, man's also super clean uh, with the ball and runs forward all the time, delivers the ball to whoever needs it. From his side, is mostly uh, Messi. So uh, that connection that he can make Paredes, Lo Celso, Messi, and just circle around. Maybe even the striker joins in and cycle the ball together close to the penalty area. Uh, it's super fun to watch. Um, they play super well together. Yeah, he's also very versatile. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess his main replacement would be um, Alexis McAllister for from Brighton, who's been super good as well. Um, every time he had to come in for the national team, he's performed. Uh, he just didn't have that many chances yet. He has five caps so far. That is in a lot of sample size, but uh, when he's coming, he's been good. So. We trust that he's going to make the, the squad as well for Qatar. Yeah. And well, then for the final center mid. Uh, Rodrigo De Paul, he's been uh, the main man of the midfield for me. Uh, a surprise as well because uh, he flew under the radar for so long. And now he's the star of the team, it seems, you know, um, with those long crosses. Uh, the, especially the one in the final against Brazil that passed for Di Maria was insane. Um, yeah, no, uh, it's really the heart of the team right now, um, making everything happen, um, 
going for those tackles when needed. Uh, even, I don't know, talking to the, the referee and stuff, he's super vocal, super energ energetic. Uh, I love everything about him as well. Uh, he's often been replaced by Ezequiel Palacios from Bayer Leverkusen, uh, who's also a uh, super clean with the ball. Uh, just these three are the main ones. Los Celso Paredes, the ball are impossible to move. These three are super clean, but Palacios uh, would come behind them for sure. Yeah. He's going to be on the bench for the World Cup. All right. Now time to move to the front three. Yep. This is the part that's usually exciting for Argentina, but I think that what's exciting is that the back now also looks good. Uh, I think that's the main point because we've always had good strikers. The problem was always in the back. Um, at left wing, uh, I think you can put uh, Messi there. He's all right at football. Uh, no, seriously, what what else can you say? Like, uh, it, it's messy. Uh, this is, uh, he's the best thing that could, could have ever happened to us. And people are starting to recognize him so much more now because he shows so much passion for the national team. He's always down to play. Even those friendlies that to some people doesn't matter, like against Estonia just now, he wants to play them. He wants to score all the goals. He wants to be part of the team. Um, and it's super good after such a painful road for him in the national team. He even left after losing the Copa America final in 2016. He was so done with the national team. There was so much pressure on his shoulders and he came back because this is what he loves. And now finally see him enjoy the national team is so good. I love his seeing him happy mostly. Uh, I think the only thing, the only person that comes close to Messi uh, would be uh, Dybala in that position. Um, yeah, he he has been super good with the national team. We always doubt Dybala. We always wonder, oh, is he going to do well? But uh, every time he comes in, he shows um, how much of a golden player he is. So Dybala is going to be at the World Cup, in my opinion. Yeah, striker. Um, I think it's pretty obvious. Yeah, Lautaro Martinez. Uh, super good for Inter. Fantastic season. Uh, the main driving force, keeping them fighting the Syria up until the last match day. Um, yeah, he's been super good. He has 20 goals in 38 caps. Uh, he's been super reliable and connect um, re really well with Messi and the rest of the team. He can also come down and play a bit to catch the ball again, like we saw at Finalissima, uh, re recovering the ball and then delivering. It, that's also something he can do. He's very strong physically. So, yeah, it's a super complete striker. Um, my main worry is uh, the backup, but because without Lautaro, um, we don't have that many options. Uh, Lucas Salario was mentioned a few times. He plays for Leverkusen, but he spent a lot of time injured and hasn't been starting much, doesn't have much rhythm. Dio Simeone was also mentioned at some point, but I think the main backup is going to be Julian Alvarez, currently playing at River Plate, but was bought by Manchester City back in January. Uh, he's a bit of a golden boy right now. Uh, so I think he's going to be the main backup in, in Qatar. Makes sense. All right, let's move to right wing. Uh, it's going to be Angel Di Maria. Um, someone else who also reinvented himself with the national team. After the 2018 World Cup, maybe many people said he was done with the national team. He, he couldn't play anymore. Um, he never performs. So, in the national team, the way he does in clubs. Um, but he came back uh, in the Copa America 2021, the last one. Uh, he wasn't even starting. The only match he started was the final, and that turned out great because he kept, he kept proving that he still has it in him. And ever since, he's been super good, scoring so many goals, dribbling so many opponents, being so fast. 
uh, doing what he does at clubs finally for the national team. Uh, so it's been also amazing to see him, uh, another redemption arc for him. Um, the main replacement would be uh, Nicolas Gonzalez, who plays for Fiorentina and also had an stellar season there. Uh, he's also super good, super fast, uh, always always good for, for the national team. It's just that, yeah, Di Maria coming back and being on level, uh, you cannot top that. Yeah. So um, let's look at some other players that um notable absentees on Lucas squad too. Alejandro Gomez, um, you got Joaquin Carrera, mm-hmm. and El Carrera, and so yeah. Do you, do you what about do you, what about these three players? Um, Alejandro Gomez is gonna be in the World Cup for sure. Um, such a bowler, um, so intense, uh, always recovering balls and. And moving forward, uh, he's su- a super complete player. Uh, he's going to be for sure. Um, the Koreas, both of them, uh, I have my doubts. I think uh, Joaquin Correa is going to be at the World Cup. Angel, uh, the one from Atletico Madrid, I'm not so sure. Uh, my bet is that he's not going to be at the World Cup because we have so many uh, forwards. Um but they are both uh, very solid options. I, I just think uh, Joaquin is the one, uh, the one who will come in the end, just to have a bit more depth in the striker position. All right, <coughs> that's fair enough indeed. So now that we talk, now that you talked about your squad, let's talk about that expectation for Argentina this World Cup. So obviously, um, I think the expectation is to win it, right? Uh, right now, with the level of excitement, uh, yeah, I think the the expectation is to win it. But I'm not going to put that expectation on the national team just because it's the World Cup and anything could happen. Like, if you look at our schedule, I think we got a very favorable group. Um, like, from the pot two, I think Mexico was one of the easier ones. Um, Poland is maybe one of the least scary European sides. And Saudi Arabia shouldn't be much of an issue either. So I think that we got a very good uh, group. But after that, it gets complicated. Like, round of 16, you're getting someone, either France or, or Denmark, and that's already a hard match. And after that, maybe you get Netherlands. After that, maybe Brazil. And those start being like 50-50 match, you know? Um, I could see ourselves winning the whole thing or maybe losing in quarters to Netherlands. You never know. Um, because at the World Cup, you may be the better team, but you also need that luck. Um, for the 2002 World Cup, uh, we finished like eight points ahead of world, eventual world champions Brazil in the qualifiers. We were by far the best team in the world, and we just didn't perform. We were ravaged by uh, injuries, and our players were so tired, we didn't perform, and we went out in the group stage, something that was basically impossible before the World Cup. So anything could really happen. But yeah, with the win at the Copa America, the unbeaten streak, um, people were saying, oh, yeah, but you can beat Conmebol teams over and over. You perform against Brazil. How are you going to do against European teams? Well, we went and beat Italy. Yes, this Italy maybe wasn't so good. Um, maybe it isn't the best side in Europe, but it is a very strong national team and we just swept the floor with them. So I think um, the expectation is to at least make uh, the quarters and from then on it's uh, 50-50 every match. Um, I really want to win it. We have the capacity. Um, This is going to be a very emotional World Cup for me. Either we win it or we lose it, I'm going to cry. Um, but yeah, very big expectations now uh, with the success they've been showing and how they play together as a unit. Yeah, RG is definitely one of the front runners of the tournament and I expect them to do very well. You know, and, um, for me personally, I, I would say RG should at least get the quarterfinals. That should be the very minimum. And then from that point on, man, semis, the final... It's going to be very interesting because let me just say this right now, man. I want to see an RG Brazil semifinal so badly. I want to see it, man. <laughs> My heart's not ready for it, but yeah, I want to see it as well. Yeah. And um, it would be crazy because 
for me, everyone's talking about, oh, RG of Portugal in the final. I'm like, okay, that's good. But that is better, <laughs> in my view. RG of Brazil is more interesting than that, in my opinion. Yeah, true. Yeah, for me, it's the same. Just That's basically guaranteed uh, banter for life. Like, you get bragging rights for life if you win that. that there's no coming back. Yeah, the only downside is that this is the semifinal. I wish it was a final, but hey, at least you do. Yeah. You know, semi is still pretty intense, but it's really interesting because, like I said, we do, uh, like you like you said, RG are looking very solid. They have the quarterly long mm-hmm. unbeaten streak in international football, and they've just been amazing. You know, defensively, RG been amazing. Um, do I think they'll win it? Uh, I don't know, man. Personally, at this very moment, I have to say, not quite. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be interesting though because I think. Because I, I, I could see RJ winning this, but at the same time, I still don't know how RJ will do in those kind of massive games. Like, the games against, like, France and Germany, you know, or, like, um, nations like Spain, I feel like it'll be very mm-hmm. interesting. So it's hard to call at this very moment. And obviously, guys, we have still a lot of day, uh, weeks ahead to come, you know, because, like, remember, guys, the World Cup's going to take place in November, not in the summer. So that could be very different to see. Uh, what happens here and um yeah man i've just been really impressed with argentina and i think they're definitely one of the favorites to win the world cup yeah yeah i agree i think the front three are gonna be argentina france and brazil in whatever order you want to put them um but yeah it's super hard i think spain if we face them they're gonna give us a really hard time brazil always a hard time france always a hard time germany they beat us almost every time yeah, so you may not want to play yeah, Germany. <laughs> yeah, Just avoid yeah. Germany. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Germany gi- gives me the flashbacks. You know, we beat them that, that one time in the '86, but I wasn't. Every t- since I've been watching the World Cup, they always beat us. So <laughs> yeah, Germany. Um, oh man, just avoid Germany. Then you're gonna. Win. <laughs> then you're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Um, no, but I don't know if we're going to win it because, like you said, anything could happen. We could have injuries. Um, we could get unlucky on the day. We could maybe not perform. Maybe the other team is better on the day because there are many very competitive teams. But what I can say is that we're going to make everyone sweat for it. We're going to compete against anybody. Like We are not afraid of anyone at this yeah. point. Like I said, man, the World Cup, man, anything can happen in the World Cup. And obviously, this will probably be Messi's final World Cup. Do you agree with that? Uh, I think it is, at least on this level. Like, if he gets to the next World Cup, it's going to be just for the vibes, you know, just because he's Messi, uh, not really for his play. This is the last uh, World Cup of prime Messi, I'd say. Okay, fair enough. That's a, that's a, fair enough. And, um... Yeah, I would say, for me personally, I would say this is probably his likely his final World Cup. I don't think he will stick around too much longer. Um, mm-hmm. He might give, like, a, I feel like he might give another Copa America go, but, like, I feel like he might retire for the next Copa America. That's just what I think. Yeah, yeah, it's likely. So, yeah, let's see what happens, man, because, like I said, man, this is a huge for Messi, you know, for his legacy, because if he wins that World Cup, man, he's completed football. Yeah, yeah, he, he he completed the game, basically. Um, yeah, until he wins the World Cup, everyone's going to keep comparing him to Maradona and things. Yeah. I don't really compare them. You know, they, they are two Amazing great players. players for the national team. Amazing, uh, legendary even. Um, but, you know, just because someone won the Copa America, someone won the World Cup, they are still the GOATs in my eyes. Um, I don't need Messi to win the World Cup for me to say that he's the GOAT. Um, but yeah, un- until he doesn't win the World Cup, people are going to still compare him to Maradona. Um, I just really want him to win it because I want him to be happy. And I know this is what he wants the most. Ever since that 2014 heartbreak, this is what he most wanted. He wants nothing more than this. So I really want to see him get it. Yeah. And like I said, man, it'll be, it'll be a good way to end his career. You know, with the World Cup trophy. Uh, let's see what happens, though, because, like I said, man, this RG team is looking really solid. So, I guess that pretty much rounds up for today. So, I hope you guys did enjoy this video, guys. Comment down below where you guys think RG is going to finish in the World Cup. For me, I'm going to say, if I had to give an early prediction right now, I will say maybe semis. I will say semis for now. Um, mm. I can't quite say final yet. Um, 
I don't know. Brazil's looking good, so we'll have to see. But I will say semis should be the minimum expectation. Yeah, um, that's fair. You know, let's see what happens, though, because like I said, it'll be very interesting. So comment down below your thoughts on that. Uh, comment down below any Argentinian players that we me- forgot to mention, because there's probably some that we forgot to mention here that should have been included in the squad or include the reserves or something like that, of course. And that's going to be pretty much it for today, guys. Hope you guys enjoy. Comment down below your thoughts. Subscribe if you're new. Like the video if you did. Make sure you guys check out my website. Let's description below. And, of course, special thanks to Rank for coming on here and giving his thoughts on RGN national team. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem, man.